Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. This is Hunter from Mount Ash Photography. Join me in another night under the stars here in the backyard as we do have one wonderful weather. That was basically fall. Two, we have a new moon in the vicinity. So that only leaves number three. Let's go after some dark nebulae. Yeah, talk about a rare combination of having temperatures that don't make you sweat, no humidity, no smoke in the sky either. It is now Labor Day. We're looking at temperatures only in the 70s. What a beautiful combination. And then with a new moon tonight as well. Talk about, you know, alignment of the stars as we're going to go after some very faint targets inside of the constellation of Cepheus where we're going to be capturing a lot of dark nebulae here over the next couple of nights. Now, first off, I got to say thank you to everyone who hit up out in Asher Prince over the weekend during the Labor Day sale. You basically ran me dry of stock. So thank you to every single one of you for that. What an incredible weekend. And I really hope that you like the new products that we have. And hopefully here soon, I'll be able to restock a lot of that. So you have more access to that as well. Now, when we're talking dark nebulae, Cepheus it has a ton of that. But what I'm focusing more on the most is something known as the Dark Shark Nebula. Now, I have imaged this target before the previous year when I was using a Ampatura 60mm EDR telescope, only in an F6 though. Got roughly about 18, 19 hours worth of data, and it did pretty darn good, I would say. We had a little bit of some moon, and where I was living was about a Bortal 6, so time to revisit this and add a little bit of some extra friends to it as well because there's also one nebula that I'm going after in the same field of view which is actually a discovery all the way back in 2008 with me and my buddy CJ we discovered a variable nebula inside of the Cepheus constellation where it just happened to be visible during that time and no one has actually been able to image this so i really don't know if this area is still active right now if it happened to flare up that's just basically how the thing goes when it comes to variable nebulas they're active at some portions of the years and sometimes they're not another good example of that is something known as the Gubadagia nebula which is not too far away from the iris nebula in Cepheus which does a similar kind of thing as well we'll have some periods where it's very active and then some that it's not completely at all so that's basically what we are going to be going after tonight and I brought out the nice wide field setup so we can go ahead and capture a lot of light really fast. Now as you see behind me I have switched out the big refractor I've been using for the last couple of videos and now I'm going to switch back over to the nice Rockin' On 135 which is going to be a lot of help especially for capturing a lot of light fairly fast especially with that super fast focal ratio down to f2 so here's what we're going to be working with for this uh, project here of course i mentioned going to be using the rocking on 135 which is a camera lens that can get down to an f2 which is going to be able to capture a lot of light very quickly but i am going to be doing 10 minute subs that are broadband since I'm able to do that here in my nice Bortal 4 backyard. And of course, going to be using the ZWO AM5 stream wave gear mount on my nice homemade pier here. Using camera wise, of course, going to be using the ZWO ASI 2600MC Pro, which is a one shot color camera. And inside of the filter wheel here, going to be using just one filter for this project. And that is the Optolong L Quad Enhance, which is basically the version 2 of the ever-loving Optolong L Pro. Guiding, going to be using the ZWO 120mm Mini with the SV Bunny 30mm uh, guide scope. And of course, underneath here of this uh, 3D printed uh, 
cable organizer and protector for the ASI Air Plus. So we're going to be looking at some very, very nice imagery here tonight. Now we're going over the details. I'm going to actually show you the field of view what we are going to be working with once we start setting up the image sequence here on the computer and as we wait for nightfall to go ahead and do a little bit of some polar alignment because I did take the entire rig off from the last couple of days because we did have some severe weather and I've already had a bad history of dealing with very strong winds and when it comes to my equipment after what happened in last December unfortunately where I ruined an entire setup because of strong winds blowing it over and then you know bad things happen after that so we're gonna wait for nightfall and i'll see you back on the computer once we set up the image sequence all right now we're on the computer let's go ahead and get our image sequence underway just going to use the same one that I did before. We'll just go over to the plan, open this up here. This is the one I was currently working on. And when we're looking at the sky atlas wise, this is the region I'm going to be imaging. The dark shark is going to be somewhere around here. But there are so many hidden nebulae all throughout this region here. A lot of dark nebulae that we'll be able to capture along with the dark shark as well so it should be a very very dynamic image at least that we're hoping for so going into the details here as you can see I am shooting at 600 second exposures which is 10 minutes with just broadband data and I only just put a random 200 here so it will image throughout the night so everything else is all the way pretty much set up and all I have to do is just hit this nice little plan button and it's going to go through everything that I need to do for the night. All right, we're now guiding and we're just going to patiently wait for the first image to arrive. All right, our first image is now rolling in. We're probably not going to see much of anything because this is a very, very faint region in general. And right off the bat, can't really see much of anything. And even if we and notate these regions probably nothing is going to show up as this is taking a while so we're just going to go ahead and cancel that I'm also going to increase the brightness a little bit so we can see if we happen to see anything and looks like over here I can see a little bit of the dark shark got a little bit of more dark nebulae through here all the way back through here so this is a very very rich area oh there's more dark nebulae right there and down here so it looks like we got a little bit of some action in here so we're just gonna let this run through the night and see what happens over the next couple of nights we're going to be able to constantly keep imaging this region all right so finally we have got all of our data that we wanted to get it took about three nights worth of nice clear skies doing 10 minute subs and I got roughly about 24 hours of data and let me tell you this was probably one of the most difficult processing images I've ever had to go through because there was so much in the background to deal with that I had to take three days to fully process this, this image to get it to where I like it. So unfortunately, I'm not gonna be having a full start to finish of the processing for this because if not, we're gonna be here for <laughs> way too long of a video that's gonna keep your attention. So what I wanted to do is I'm just gonna go through just the first initial aspects of what we have here. So right out of the stack, you can see, doesn't really look like much of anything is there. I mean, you can see a little bit of the dark shark. You can see a bunch of other nebulosity through here. A lot of dark nebula in this region. And you have that really cool looking appendage that is photographed a lot. And so that happens to be in Cepheus. But the main process is what I did is first done a little bit of some dynamic background extraction, which I had to do several rounds of this because I had a weird gradient that was like along the top of the image that I had to really keep working at to get it out. So 
Once doing that, did some dynamic background extraction. Then I happened to go through a little bit of some blur exterminator. Then I went and did the color calibration of SPCC. And then with the color calibration of using the Optolong L Quad Enhance. And then I just did a basic stretch for the most part. But what I really went into detail is I extracted the stars completely out of because as you can see from the field of view in itself, there is a ton of stars. And unfortunately, with a lot of stars, it will get rid of a lot of the nebulosity detail. So I had to really tone down the stars in general. So I just split them off and I use generalized hyperbolic stretch. Not really the best with that as of yet, but I am approving with it and it definitely made a massive difference in the overall image. So with everything going through, done all of the range mask of Messing with the colors, getting it where I like it, bring out as much of the detail as possible, tone down the stars a little bit, and you are not going to believe what this final image looks like. So after all of that, this is what we ended up with. Talk about a phenomenal photo in general. I had to make myself a little smaller, but look at this. You can see the dark shark perfectly in place and just look at the absolute detail on this i've never captured anything like this before dark shark beautiful very prominent has the reflection nebulas here and there we go over to this region here and this is known as the angel shark nebula or just the angelfish nebula as it is basically moving through space and whatnot. And there's so much dust in the background here. This is all IFN. We also have that really cool area here that it kind of looks like Cthulhu in a way, especially with the one tentacle that uh, has that nice reflection nebula. This is actually a very faint planetary nebula that I didn't know about. And we also have the nice arc of hydrogen which is with a supernova remnant. We also have another beautiful region here of a dark nebula. Not sure exactly what the name of this is, but I'll have the link to the Asher bin so it does all the plate solving. But I want to focus on this area right here because this area here is very special to me because back in 2008, I talked about this earlier in the video, that me and my longtime friend CJ discovered a variable nebula inside of Cepheus. And it has been inactive for the last 15 years. We discovered it back in 2008. Now, fast forwarding to 2024, it's active again. And here it is, this area right here, just that center portion right there. Now, this is already a discovered area of the dark nebula but the reflection nebula or like the reflection and variable nebula has been inactive for a while and it's back so this is the first time i was able to actually put a picture to what we found in his backyard with a 14 and a half inch dubsonian telescope and then i double clarified as well with my 12 inch me light bridge at the time and then we sent it off to the towns and uh, university here and confirmed that this is a undiscovered variable nebula. So 24 hours worth of data leading to something like this, probably my most absolute favorite target I have ever captured in my life, and especially to be able to see the discovery, well, the one of only discovery I've had. So I hope everyone got to enjoy the video and you know, really take in the depth of why I love this hobby in general, just to be able to do, have beautiful images just like this. Make sure to like, uh, leave a comment, like the video, subscribe to the channel. I love doing astrophotography. And also thank you again for everyone from the past sale from Labor Day, completely sold out of everything and having to get now a new printer, a bigger one to kind of keep up with the demand. So thank you as always. There's going to be 
more on the way of videos coming up here relatively soon. I'm going to be doing a nice calibration one, and we're going to be having more clear skies coming up here for next week. And we're going to be going after another wonderful target that is very close to Polaris. You might get a hint of that, but I don't want to spoil too much. Thank you as always. Clear skies, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers. <laughs>